Your first question uh, for Oliver Smith is, is in 2007, uh, you received the Nobel Prize for the discovery, discoveries of principles for introducing specific gene modifications in mice. These discoveries made possible the construction of animal models of the complex human genetic disease such as muscular dystrophy and sickle cell anemia. How do you feel knowing that you are contributing to the improvement of the studies related to these diseases? Uh, well, Michelle uh, and the students, uh, uh, my answer is that, of course, I feel very um, happy to have helped. I didn't actually help with muscular dystrophy, uh, but I did help with cystic fibrosis, which is uh, fairly rare, but uh, still quite frequent uh, uh, problem in Caucasian populations, in white populations. I also did experiments uh, which helped a great deal with uh, uh, not so much sickle cell anemia as thalassemia. And that's a, a problem in, uh, that happens uh, in uh, the bone marrow that cannot make uh, a hemoglobin uh, forming cells uh, properly. Uh, so I've been very ha uh, happy to have uh, helped in these things. Uh, but more, uh, perhaps more significant uh, from my point of view is the uh, work that I helped to do uh, in relation to controlling blood pressure uh, in uh, people. What are the important factors to control blood pressure? And uh, that's genetic factors I'm talking about. Uh, and did a lot of experiments in that uh, uh, in, in my laboratory uh, towards that and so then your second question is what do you expect from future discoveries of studies that use these animal models well i think uh, they uh, my answer to that is uh, that of course uh, uh, it's uh, things have progressed a great deal uh, since uh, my work uh, back that for which the Nobel Prize was given. My work was um, more than 20 years ago. Um, and uh, so a lot has happened since then. And uh, so uh, the particular animal models uh, that I made, or that my lab made, I should say, uh, are n not uh, particularly relevant at the present time. Uh, so future studies are clearly going to use a new sort of method for altering genes called gene editing. People are calling it gene editing, uh, a technique, the CRISPR technique, and um, that is already making many uh, new uh, findings. Uh, now the new third question was, in the beginning of your career, have you ever imagined that one day you would receive the Nobel Prize for your discoveries? And the answer is very clearly, no, I never thought about the Nobel Prize in doing my work. I was always doing work because I enjoyed the work and, and found discovering new things was exciting and uh, didn't think about the Nobel Prize at, at all. Later on, when the gene targeting work was successful, then people would say to me, oh, when are you going to get the Nobel Prize, Oliver? And I said, I don't know, they seem to have forgotten me. <laughs> and uh, uh, so it took quite a long time after that work was done before the Nobel Committee recognized it. Your yeah, fourth question is why do you why did you decide to be a researcher? Well, the answer is I didn't ever decide to be a researcher really. I did, I decided when I was maybe about seven years old that I wanted to be an inventor. I didn't know the word scientist, uh, uh, but I did know the word inventor, and I knew that people who invented things uh, found out all sorts of new things and could do things that could not be done earlier. And so 
to become an inventor was my idea as, as, as a seven-year-old. And I suppose, in a way, that that's what I became I, when I did become, you might say, a, a dedicated scientist, uh, because most of my work has been concerned with inventing new procedures. I invented a method of uh, gel electrophoresis that enabled better separation of proteins than was possible before and then I am was the first person to make gene targeting work so I you can say in a way that I had invented these things and followed my childhood dream of becoming an inventor in uh, you ask uh, in your opinion what is the most fascinating thing about science well, I think nearly all scientists would agree uh, that uh, the most fascinating thing about science is finding something new, finding out the, either some new substance or some new procedure or something that uh, allows you to see uh, things that nobody has ever seen before or to understand things that have been very puzzling uh, before. I, I've been reading a book uh, recently on the discovery of um, quantum, uh, of, of a quanta of light and so on and the exciting things that uh, happened uh, when uh, Max Planck uh, discovered uh, that uh, energy was packaged into little uh, a tiny packages now called quanta uh, of energy and how exciting that was eventually proved to be. I, I don't know that he was uh, pretty certain that he found something uh, very interesting but he I don't think he realized just how important it was until uh, some time later. Um, in your opinion, what is the biggest problem in science nowadays? Uh, that is a question. Well, I, I think probably understanding the brain is the biggest uh, problem in the part of science that I know about. That's to say biological science. Uh, and an enormous progress has been made in that area. Oh, for example, the finding of cells that uh, respond to the location of an animal uh, in space, as it were, like a, a cell that is a, a GPS cell, a global position meaning satellite type of cell that uh, fires when the animal gets to a certain place. It's a, that's an oversimplification of it, but that's... Uh, the sort of thing that is now happening and will happen more and more, I think, in relation to understanding how the brain works and and how well it it uh, keeps information. That's uh, to me very exciting, uh, and uh, that in a way the brain probably packages um, information into several or many uh, different representations of what we might call reality, and so there'll be a, a, some visual memory, some part of the brain will be thinking about visual relationship, another part of the brain will have a, a record of uh, sound and uh, in some abstract way, and together uh, this forms the image of the world that we think of uh, as uh, a people. Um, so it's very exciting. Have you ever thought about giving up your on your scientific career is uh, uh, another question that you have asked. And uh, the answer is no, I have never really thought about giving it up. Otherwise, why would I be here uh, at 90 years of age and still working at the weekends and so on to do what I love to do, which is solve problems uh, uh, to be a, a scientist. So I've never thought about giving up. But I have, uh, of course, 
I had times when the work that I was doing was not working very well or I didn't enjoy anymore and then I gave up a particular problem. That's a different thing from me giving up science. That's giving up on working on a particular problem. And that, that happened to me with the gene targeting. I was trying to solve a problem and I spent, I spent nearly a year trying to solve a particular problem um, that was of interest to me and uh, it wasn't working very well. And then I had the idea of how to try to do gene targeting. So I was very glad to give up that work. So giving up on uh, some things is quite different from giving up on science as a whole. Uh, the, your last question is, what would you say to motivate students that are in the beginning of their careers? Well, I have a very good way to uh, tell students uh, or motivate students, and that is the most important thing is to find something that you enjoy doing. It does, if it's science, very good, then you can become a scientist. Uh, if it's music, maybe you will play the guitar, or maybe you will be a gardener. Uh, find something that you love to do. And then the motivation isn't uh, quite clear. It's a motivation of finding something you like. Don't try to make yourself do things uh, to earn money. Uh, that's a, a silly way to motivate yourself if that's your only goal because you spend two-thirds of your waking time earning money to do something in the rest of your time. That's a very poor return on investment. Much, much better find something you love to do and do that and don't worry very much about uh, how much money you make. It's nothing a really important thing. The important thing is to enjoy life and that then you can have new ideas and you can make people around you happy and that's really by far the most important thing to think about. So explore different things when you're a beginning student. Try and find out what it is that makes you oh Think how marvelous this is. Perhaps, as I say, maybe it's music, maybe it's painting, maybe it's gardening, maybe it's science. And then motivation will follow. And that's actually